we welcome as our special guest on The Beat Goes On, Lila Hari. Lila, how are you? Welcome Thanks to The Beat Goes On. And uh, it turns out you're not actually a baby boomer, Lila. No, I'm two out. years past the deadline, born in 1966. Oh, you're a youngie. I am, but I had many of the privileges yeah. of baby booming. I got a free tertiary education. I went into a job market where I had a reasonable level of security. Mm. Um, so I had plenty of the advantages, but you know, I've been living with kids and, and through a subsequent period where it hasn't been so easy. And where was that uh, birth in 1966? Where? I was what? born in Dunedin. Dunedin, wow. Yeah, my dad was a social anthropologist. He was a um, lecturer at, at Otago University. And we left in Eden when I was three yeah. and moved to Fiji. So I had my early years, my primary school years in Suva. In many ways, mm. Suva was my first sort of remembered home. Mm. And I still have very strong affiliations with Fiji. What uh, can you remember uh, being with your dad, being at university and that? Uh, what sort of a household was it that gave you these political uh, passions? It's a really good mm question and mm. it's something I think about quite a lot because my parents weren't party political when I was mm. growing up because we were in Fiji for those formative mm. years I wasn't really engaged in, in thinking through mm. New Zealand politics it wasn't the, mm. the subject of discussion we didn't have television in Fiji I didn't watch television until we came to New Zealand you know, for holidays or yeah. when I was nine yeah. years old. Mm. And so we were very much about engagement around social issues. Um, my mother was, throughout her life, very engaged in voluntary work with, it, mainly through the theatre. Mm. She was um, an actress, a director by training, and spent a lot of her, her effort mm. in engaging young people and unemployed people through theatre in productive work and productive activity. Now, the crossroads in life, you were going to be a darling of the left, as Willie Jackson says, or you were <laughs> going to be a out and out capitalist. Uh, you went, you know, you came to that point I in the road. I don't think I ever faced that point in the you road. Didn't? My commitment to mm. social justice has really underpinned all the decisions that I've made in terms of my work and my career. Mm. Uh, I graduated from law school in the late 80s. But why did you have that sense that you wanted to uh, to go in that direction? Where did that come from? I did you have an empathy for people? You felt sorry for different parts, parts of our society? I had a pretty analytical mind from mm. an early age and a lot of my Obviously, I had very strong values underpinning what eventually mm. became my political engagement. My parents' values around education, contribution mm. and tolerance have always been very informative for the way I've approached politics. In, uh, when I was 15, 1981, mm. the Springbok Tour yeah. happened in New Zealand and I felt this very strong sense of identity with the need to take a stand on that issue. We'd been studying mm. apartheid in history mm. at school. Uh, I had you know, a general knowledge of the issues. My sister was at university and surrounded by friends who were politically engaged. And my so my first sort of political actions mm. were in fact on the street yeah. um, and in that early protest movement. Now I was watching at home on television when that Hamilton game was disrupted and I was just so annoyed that this game of rugby should be so, and yet you were on the street. I think now when we all look back on that time, whatever people's positions were on the day, um, that there is a sense of identity with the fact that New Zealanders stood up and showed the world our opposition to apartheid. Nelson Mandela has subsequently said triumphed, that that, that yeah. day, yeah. the the the, um, the, game the game being called off in Hamilton sure. sent a ray mm. of sunshine into his prison cell. What better endorsement of standing up could there be than that? And since then, I freely admit, totally wrong. I was totally wrong, and I've always wondered about. Put on you. Why was I on the? Why was I on the <laughs> on wrong, wrong side? side of history? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was on the wrong side of history. Well, there's a. Uh, I think we we look mm. back, you know, so many of our actions, mm. so many of the things we choose to do are so 
deeply rooted mm. in the kind of values and assumptions yeah. that we've grown yeah. up with. And Why was a rugby match to, more important than people's rights, you see? Well, it never was. Yeah, yeah, it never was. But, but we it, had a Prime Minister the at the time who mm. was driving a very hard agenda mm. to divide New Zealand over this mm. issue. How did you get that call? Lila, we need a... We need a leader. How did that come about? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, as with these things, it, it was something that I've often thought my life mm. really fits that sort of motto that life is what happens when you're making other plans. <laughs> I had <laughs> I'd actually resigned yeah. from my job um, at the end of last year, mm. the job I'd been doing for the previous 18 months. That was the Green Party? That's right. right. And the reason I'd resigned is because this year I was going to take a sabbatical. I was going to spend the year yeah. um, exploring other ideas. Mm. Um, I, I wanted to work on my French language and mm. fortunately I got the chance to do that in yeah. France before this call came. Yeah. And, and I had lots of plans for keeping the house tidy and <laughs> having you know healthy meals on yeah. the table yeah. every <laughs> night for the family and so on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but of course then mm. what happened was that the mm. Internet Party and the Mana movement mm. began to debate and discuss internally mm. um, the proposition of forming an alliance for and you had selection. nothing to do with it at that no, stage. No, no, I had nothing, nothing to do you with it. You were watching on the sidelines, like totally everybody else. Totally on the sidelines. Yeah. Yeah. But it really sparked my interest in the potential of this movement mm. to bring together what I see as really the two sides of the digital divide in this mm. country. Yeah, that's yeah. great. But when did that call come? When did at what stage? Well into the di yeah. discussions between the So what the did internet you think when you got that call? You movement. thought, wow, this is a chance. This is wonderful. Um. At first I thought I'm doing other things, mm. which I'm really enjoying. I was doing some work for the Council of Trade Unions, mm. putting together a get out the vote campaign for yeah. this election. I had um, a great team around me and I just felt, why would I change that? Why yeah. would I go back into the political arena? Mm. The spark for me was the Internet Party's tertiary education policy oh, and great. commitment to mm. restoring free mm. education in this country right mm. through to the tertiary level. It's unfinished business for mm. me. As a member of parliament it was always a priority to look at mm. winding back student fees and student debt and it was something I really regretted not having been more effective mm. on in my previous political life. So a party that saw free education right through to the tertiary level as a core tool and a core value mm. really did attract me. Now is it like, um, you know, riding a bike? You, ha you haven't been on the bike for a while but you got back onto the bike and the first day you just went right back to being Lila Harry, a uh, I'm political still, person. I'm still getting to grips. The, the, with the handlebars the, didn't wobble. <laughs> with the, with the, not so yeah. much with the action mm. of riding the bike, mm. but the new traffic that's on the road. <laughs> so, yes, I, the yeah. bike's fine. I yeah. feel safe on the bike. Yeah. But there are, there are some changes in the traffic mm. system. Uh, there's a whole lot of different stuff out there in the environment I'm riding the bike mm. in and that means that I'm getting to grips with a whole lot of new ideas, mm. new people yeah. um, and new ways of doing politics. Look, I'm learning it's a fresh start, so isn't much it? Yeah. from the internet party and, yeah. and the utilisation mm. of the internet as a way of engaging people yeah. in the political process. So I feel quite privileged to be on this learning curve myself, it's pretty exciting. And do you see the left, right divide, you're not even going to worry about that. It's You're for everybody, aren't you? We, even us baby boomers. What's in it for us baby boomers? Well, what's in it for you, <laughs> for you baby boomers? <laughs> um, is a future for this country. Yeah. Look, I have a 24-year-old son and a mm. nearly 20-year-old son. They are both making their way in the world, both mm. in careers, in the case mm. of the younger one and his academic studies, but also in the world of culture and music, which they are both connected to too. Mm. And I see, you know, the future of my kids mm. and my hope, hopefully yeah. my grandchildren yeah. one day, as depending on the kind of government we have in the very near future, because these sort of opportunities mm. to 
take a great leap forward with mm. a massive technological revolution. Mm. Don't come around for every generation so, and every day. And we happen to be the generation in the box seat right mm. now. Now, we've got to finish now, Lila. It's been great having you on the program. But uh, everybody's always interested. What's Kim.com? What's he like? You, you, you met him for the first time, obviously, and you've got to know him now. You yeah, enjoy his I, company? Very much. Mm. He's a very smart person. He has an absolutely genuine commitment to this cause and lots of great ideas for how to go with it. But he is also liberating mm. the people involved to get on with it and do it for ourselves. He's passed over the leadership of the Internet Party in mm. that sense uh, to me, and he is there as a supporter. Mentor. Uh, a, a, a visionary for the party, yeah. someone who has an enormous expertise to offer us, uh, but someone who wants the party mm. to get on with the job of developing ourselves as a movement here. Come September, is it? September 2014? Exciting yeah. times. Voting 3rd of September to the 20th of September. Yeah. So you can vote yeah. any day in the 18 days up until the election oh, this wonderful. year. So it's going to be a tumultuous, how many, what have we got? We're looking at June, July, August. It's Just what, over three months. Three yeah. months. This is going to be the busiest time of your life. <laughs> I've done it before, <laughs> but not with as much fun as I'm doing it this time. Now, when you're a new cabinet minister, what uh, post would you like? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not put the cart before the horse. <laughs> Lila, great to talk to you. And best of luck in September. Thank you very much. Thanks.